Hi. <laughs> right, um, hi, I'm sorry, I'm the Belgian. Uh, sorry for my English, I can do it in French. But anyway, my name is Frankie. Um, I've also uh, been to Ad Party last year. Uh, thank you all for inviting me back. And in short, I'm giving you a presentation on the um, various demo parties which exist in Europe, which uh, you might one day want to visit or um, have already visited. So um, let's do a little, the little show of hands. A serenade here. Um, who has already visited European demo parties? That's one quarter. Okay. Um, who plans to go in the next 12 months to something? Who wants to go? Someday in his life. One, two, three, four guys who don't. Why? <laughs> okay, so, good. Um, now, the point in Europe, let's, um, first of all, we have to define what Europe is. <laughs> it has nothing to do with cheesy 80s bands, I can assure you that. And we have well evolved uh, well beyond the Holy Roman Empire. So it's none of these. What we have is kind of a huge continent. Um, it's um, split up into zones. You have Scandinavia in dark blue. You have uh, Central Europe in the uh, light blue. That's France and the UK. Uh, Central Europe, uh, Germany and Poland and etc. Southern Europe, Italy and Greece, uh, Spain and Portugal uh, form the uh, Iberian subcontinent and um, Turkey. And here's also a presumption that we have lots of kings and queens. Can you name these? It's a quiz, come on. The center one should be easy. As well. On the left, it's Herman van Rompuy. It's the um, president of the permanent uh, meeting of the European whatevers. It's something they created and then we have the lovely Angela Merkel, who is the, uh, the uh, um, German, uh, not president, but um, leader, leader of the government, the chancellor. But then, of course, most countries don't, don't have monarchies. Um, it's actually a minority. Uh, you have um, Spain, um, Great Britain, Belgium, Holland, Denmark, Sweden, and which one did I forget? It's a tiny speck in the middle. Uh, why both are monarch monarchies? No, that's not the one. This is Luxembourg, which doesn't, which doesn't have a king, it has a grand duke. While uh, Monaco is a principality, it has a prince. Yay, politics. You see, this is how the Middle Ages still go on. It's, uh, it's a wonder we have internet sometimes. And then, some of these countries, they cuddle together in what is now called the European Union. Um, noteworthy here is that Norway, which is next to Sweden on the top, is not a member of the European Union. Um, why? Because they have oil and gas and lots of fishing industry to which the uh, EU is um, um, pretty, um, but they make lots of fishing regulations to which the Norwegians can now say, well, um, we don't join you and we uh, fish everything empty. Um, Iceland, Iceland is the same for whale fishing, by the way. Um, it might. Are you taking notes? <laughs> so, but now that um, we are have the have the politics down, say, well, okay, um, now let's let's go um, do some traveling because it's easy. It's one. It's it's all one open uh, Europe, but then um, it's not again because this are. It's really hard to see, but in the um, not so really light blue, you have the Schengen countries, which are part of the European Union, but not all of them. And inside them is like a free travel arrangement. The EU is uh, mostly customs. Um, and tax-based, um, the, the Schengen is for free travel without ID documents. Uh, if you get a visa for, say, Belgium, you will actually get a visa or a tourist entry for the Schengen area, which would also, which would also give you entrance to, say, Germany or Finland, but not to the UK. And then we have this. <laughs> 
which you have in a lot of places, but not everywhere as well. Again, uh, the UK is out, Sweden is out, Denmark is out. Um, but um, while not a member of the European Union, um, uh, Vatican City, uh, Monaco, um, Andorra um, all also have the euro as their currency. If you're wondering, Liechtenstein, they stick to the Swiss franc. So it all means once you're into Europe, you can get easily drunk in Finland, go to Germany and end up swinging tomatoes in Spain without much, much, much of a problem. As well as you can go left to right and start in England, go to Germany and end up in Hungary without too much of an issue. Uh, you would still need an ID to get in to the UK, but they have no problem when you leave. It is when you're um, going through Eurotunnel, which is a train thing connecting France and the UK, um, there are five, five to seven security checkpoints getting into the UK, getting out, there's just a French guy holding up a sign that, that says, please take route A and get out. <laughs> it's that easy, so this is not a problem. So looking back at those two slides, well, you can't get past Germany. Still, so take that in mind. But we're talking about demo parties here. Um, so I looked at some um, statistics and where I got them. Um, I look back at European demo parties going back about a year from now. Um, it's uh, it's uh, 12 months, uh, two times, uh, six months, second half of uh, 2012, first half of 2013. Uh, party listings were obtained from uh, demoparty.net. Um, how many people attended based on original people listed on uh, Slangpunk pictures. If you don't know Slangpunk, please take a look at it. And a number of releases while looking at the scene.org files. So, where are the most parties? Well, this is pretty obvious. Most of them are in Sweden and Germany. Uh, Finland coming in a close third, and um, the Netherlands, over here in the center, they're cheating because during uh, my statistics gathering, they had outlined in October and in March, so they counted twice. But um, looking at that, well, you can do so much more with this data, so you could look, put in a pie chart and have it look awesome, like this. And you can see that half of the parties are in Germany and um, Scandinavia. By the way, many people in Finland don't consider themselves to be part of Scandinavia. If you want to piss off at one can Finn, that's how to go. Say, oh, you're Scandinavian, and then they will get shouting strange words at you. It's, it's, but it's, it's great fun, try it, really. <laughs> so, um, okay. N now we know, okay, these would be good places to go, but when during the year do we do this? Well, on average, you have, outside of summer and out, outside of winter, you have about uh, two parties a month, two to three a month. Um, exception, of course, being summer, and then the February-March thingy. As you can see, there are four parties in March and two in, two in February. Why would that be? Easter. Uh, Easter, Easter Monday was uh, April 1st this year, so Easter itself was uh, the last uh, day of March, which counts the party as being in March, but then why Easter? It has to do with the um, official holiday scheme that we have all over Europe, meaning that looking at all the, the countries which are at the top, which are the countries where we have parties in, and then all the uh, individual uh, official holidays that exist, you end up at two big blocks. One is the Easter block, which is uh, one third of the page, and then here at the bottom uh, is the Christmas period. So looking into that, your popul most popular dates are, well, N New Year's Day, nobody's gonna do a party then, and Easter, and well, and Christmas as well, where you have um, the ultimate meeting in Germany and some, and some smaller events. So, okay. But imagine you're a social people that says, which party has the most visitors? And then you see that looking at Slangpunk for gathering data is a really bad idea because it sees that in June, although there were some parties there, nobody attended. 
and, uh, and March had a lot because that's uh, revision and everybody got tagged in those pictures. So because that graphic sucked, where can I release? Where do we have the most productive people? It is how many, on average, how many releases are done at a party in this month? As you see, it kind of averages out at the 40 to 50. You have some, uh, some big exceptions, again, in the Easter period. Um, and also in um, August, which is assembly, they have uh, quite a lot of uh, competitions for um, various platforms that are otherwise not really known. So looking at then who is the most productive, meaning here um, one visitor, how many entries on average that does he submit? The big peak in February is data storm in Sweden, where you have 200 people in attendance and about 10 music composers, and they're all musicians. So this is cheating by the Swedes. And of course, you, you, you wouldn't be dancing without drinking a beer. So where do you have to be for um, the, the beer wise? And because you can discuss quality, I just uh, looked, at, looked at price. So the cheapest beer is in the Czech Republic. The most expensive one is in Norway. Sweden, a, sec a close second one, and France in third. But you usually drink, drink wine while you're in France. For the record, Belgium is uh, at 1.5 euros. Um, well, somewhere in the cheaper area. So, well, now you can decide where to go. Um, you need to know some language skills, which are pretty basic. Some, somebody pronounce the Finnish for me. Come on, it's hey and hey hey. It's not that bad. And when you arrive at a party, well, okay, you need you, you need some things. You need to you need to know where okay where where do, do I get my power? Where do I get my network? And and how does the wireless work? Mind that the German word Mehrfachsteckdose can sound aggressive, but we Belgians at Revision have replaced this by the lovely word Stromblokske, which will say as much to you as Mehrfachsteckdose does, but it just sounds cooler. Um, some accents are missing, but you can imagine them in. And once you are there, well, you need to get around. You will need a drink, you will get some food, and you need a party t-shirt. <laughs> and when you are drunk, well, please memorize these swear words really, really, really quickly. <laughs> and, of course, the coolest word is German, which is the Kaltgerätekabel which is a really, really crazy word for power cord. <laughs> now, once you're there and you're all set up and you have submitted your entries and you have gotten drunk beyond belief, you need to sing along with everybody. You need to know the memes. You need to tag along. <laughs> First one is this one. Let's try it. Hello. Bas. Hello. Bas. Hello. Bas. You got it. Excellent. All right, now, now for this one. <laughs> and you're all doing it right because pants off is only during the demo compo. Not, not before, not after, not doing music or graphics. Pants off is during the demo compo. Mostly when you're Danish, but that's not an excuse. Final one. Amiga! You're getting there, all right. So, where do you want to go? You have, so you have some options. If you want to limit yourself to, to one party a year, a really big one, then um, revision in Germany and assembly in Finland are your most logic choices. Um, you want to go to a smaller event, meaning in the 150, 200 people range, we still have uh, a large um, international audience, some uh, parties with a good reputation, um, output meeting in Germany um, between Christmas and New Year, um, Evoke August in Germany, or um, Bunsley now demo days in uh, Switzerland, mostly one or two weeks after Evoke are your best bet. 
Um, and if you want local smaller parties, you can go uh, to uh, Russia, UK, um, Hungary, Belgium, um, um, Norway, and Finland. I have put uh, the gathering, while it's a big event in um, local influence, because uh, compared to, well, um, it's, it's at Easter, there are many releases, many compos, but it's, um, it's a land party with a demo party aspect, while assembly is a demo party with a land party. It's, um, we, I can discuss this, but you can um, go on with another presentation about that. Um, should you want to go for your retro thingies, you have Outline in Holland, Data Storm in Sweden, um, Arrok in Hungary, and uh, Reset in uh, France, for instance. And, well, that was it from my end with my brain dump. Questions on where to go and travel advice. Nobody, come on. I, I worked so hard. <laughs> sure. Why is like beer like so expensive in Norway? What's up with that? Um, they have a different taxation system, meaning that you pay taxes on what you use. The, the income taxes is comparably low, comparably meaning still a lot compared to the US. Um, but they will tax you on what you use. Um, I have had words of artists who went to Norway for a gig. They got paid um, one thousand dollar in fee. They bought the band two rounds of beer and they're out of money. Mm -hmm. Nice one. All right, then um, I guess thanks and um, vote for us in the demo combo. Uh -huh. <laughs>